Yeah. <clears throat> what an amazing day this has been so far. Yeah, you've had a few interviews already, yeah? We've had two. We got one more after this. Um, we had some people actually come by and visit us uh, just on the way to the airport, which was kind of cool. Yeah, they live over on uh, Maui. So uh, they they were visiting over here with her family, and uh, they they were like, "Let's get to, let's just say hi," you know. We did. It was really cool. Great. <laughs> All right, we already got five people in the house. Let me check the sound. Cool. Eight people and counting. Let's see. <clears throat> All right, nine people. We're going to start the show in just a second. Hello, Karen Starr. Thank you for your continued love and support. And your contribution to the solar energy, Sasha Grace, too, Angel Divine, Nasia Sia, Soraya Williams, Tom White Bear, always there holding it up. Karen Went, got 19 people and counting. Paula, Pauline Kudajar, Katarina de Amor, long time participating in uh, Sology. Angel Divine, yeah. All right, Janine Pope Hutt from Victoria, Australia. 22 people if these shows resonate with you please share thank you all for your continued love and support and contributions for allowing us to do what we do uh, we're a hundred percent viewer supported and uh, operating on the 5d <laughs> there's no strategy here we just do what we're supposed to do and stay on our hearts hello Johan gravel gravel mary wilson flynn delia flores and jeanette allen 27 people and counting all right, we got a we got a really cool show here. Very interesting brother with us, going to share space with us today. Um, I'm excited about this. Uh, let me give you a little backdrop, and I'll introduce our guest. Um, Jan Lemurie is an international facilitator, a presenter, and author of Inner Dolphin Awakening. His curiosity was sparked 14 years ago when dolphins started visiting him in his dreams. His journey took him to meet and often swim with cetaceans in Hawaii, Croatia, Portugal, New Zealand, Tonga, and Australia. In 2012, he finished his studies of social work with a thesis on dolphin-assisted therapy. He is passionate about awakening our inner dolphin, a part of us that is joyful, curious, and quantum, and has channeled numerous tools, meditations, and insights to assist us on this journey. He currently resides in a very snow-laden Taos, New Mexico, <laughs> with his wife and three-year-old daughter. Beautiful. Thank you for uh, sharing space with us today and honoring us with your presence. Uh, welcome to Soul Speaks 5D. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. It's it's always a joy to share about the journey with dolphins and uh, see what what comes out as we start sharing, you know? Yeah. That's a beautiful painting in the back. Uh, did you do that? Uh, my best friend did. Yeah, wow, that's oil. that's a that's powerful. Yeah, that's a powerful thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely a multi-dimensional. Yeah, definitely yeah. multi. As as this journey has been, you know, for many years now, so we're we're. I, I believe we're just starting to to uncover like the surface. You were just seeing the first layer of what of who we are actually and what's there in the multidimensional reality. So dolphins are here with a very specific mission. I always say, imagine yourself on the other side before you came in as a soul. Um, you knew you you're gonna probably forget everything. Some people remember a little bit, but mostly we come in as a kid, you forget everything, who you are as a as a multidimensional being and, and how you're connected to different layers of this uh, of this uh, reality and different layers of multidimensional reality. So I believe we made an agreement with dolphins where they would come in and and not forget so we have the freedom to forget and go through life and bump into each other and try to understand what this journey is about who we are and and you know we know there's a soul but we have not much of an idea of what this soul would be in a way because everything about soul that we know 
was usually given to us by, by people around us or teachers or whoever. But really, the only way to know the soul is to experience it. Yeah. So That's true. dolphins, I believe, embody the joy that your soul feels all the time. So when you swim with them, you get that same joy reflected back to you to as a reminder. And usually it is when you're ready to, to start receiving it, it, it's reflected back to you. So you can start embodying it and feel it in, in, inside your cells. It starts to be awakened inside you. It really is the dolphin joy, I say, is the joy of your soul. This is the same joy that your soul feels all the time. And that's hard for us to imagine, but but it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, I'm a big uh, supporter and follower of Robert Sepper, S E P E H R, who who uh, who heads uh, Atlantean Gardens. He's an anthropologist and, or I'm sorry, a, yeah, anthropolo anthropologist, researcher, uh, producer, writer, and he has an excellent. Uh, excellent uh, production he does on youtube uh and it's about the dolphins and, and it's a, a seven or eight minutes uh, it's probably a little clip of a bigger piece of a book or something but he he explains a lot of that and uh so i have to ask you in terms of your awakening uh was that the primary catalyst these dreams that started coming in with the dolphins or were you already awake prior to that yeah, I, um, it was a few years before that, that I had my spiritual awakening and it happened when I was 17 years old. I went to this, actually my classmate just dragged me with them. There was a couple of people going to uh, this little community in France where every summer there's five, seven thousand people showing up every week. And it's actually a Protestant uh, Catholic community. And um I was brought up as an atheist, so that's why they had to drag me with them. But I always <laughs> wanted to, I always wanted to travel, and um, I, it's Slovenia where I'm from. So for the listeners, I'm from Slovenia, which is a little country. I live in the states now, but Slovenia used to be part of uh, Yugoslavia back in the '80s, and then it became independent in '91. <laughs> And from Slovenia, that little community in France is like 12 hours away. So when I was 17, they kind of dragged me along to go there. And the main thing, the main argument was about the girls. They said, there's girls from all over the world and there's 5,000 of them. Why would, you <laughs> want to stay? Why would you want to stay, you know, here, you know? And they said, just pretend like you don't need to worry about the prayer part. You're, you're going to be fine. Just come with us. We're going to have a blast. So that's what happened. And as I came there as an atheist, I was actually having arguments with people about God not being real. Because I, I, I believed as an atheist that only when you can touch something that it's real. So I would grab different, different objects like leaves and stuff. And I would say, look at this. You see the leaf? I can touch it. I can feel it. I can smell it show me God, you know, I want to touch him, feel him and smell him, you know, I didn't know what that intention was causing. But <clears throat> mm -hmm. now looking back, I understand that I gave a very clear intention that I want to feel touch and, and experience God really. And, you know, as I went through that week, I didn't know when 5,000 people get together to pray in that simple way that they have it there, where they just sing these beautiful songs, it creates a certain resonance. And I believe that resonance and the fact that there was um, all these people from around the world that were open hearted and that opened my heart, um, that all caused me to something in my energy to shift. And when I got back home, I got sick the first day when I got back home and I was on and on sick with very high temperature for eight weeks. And this was really, and in those eight weeks, I was so bored because I had to be in bed most of those eight weeks. I was so bored that I grabbed any book that came, you know, my way. And one of them was about <clears throat> the little people and the lamental beings. And I didn't understand anything in that book except for one sentence that said, your illness is trying to tell you something. Yeah, and, I was going to say, I was going to say the universe has a way of uh, 
you set your intentions and uh, that light shined all shined on you <laughs> on your shadow. It's crazy. I I didn't understand. It felt reading that book. I I didn't know what it was about. What is with these fairies and little people and so on? I had no idea what they're trying to what they're what they're trying to tell. It, it just didn't understand it. And then that sentence was like, oh, and and all of a sudden I sat there and I'm like. I've been sick for many weeks. What is it trying to tell me? And that really then opened up my 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 mind to the possibility of something else being there, of, of something that I don't know, that I don't understand. And that's when I started reading all kinds of books. And it was mostly about religion and, and different different practices, different spiritual practices. But that was kind of the beginning for me. And then a few years into that... Uh, dolphins started to show me in my dreams and they are the only dreams still to this day the dolphin dreams are repeating and I get a thing going so it's not the same people or the same kind of dolphins or the same exact dream but the theme is the same so for example the first dream that ever came right. was me looking over over um like usually it was a very flat water um it was either a lake or, or the ocean and there was a lot of people next to me and i would always point to a specific spot on the water and say dolphins without any 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 previous sign that there was any dolphins there i would just point at the spot and say dolphins everybody looked and that's when the dolphins came out so that was the dream, the same theme on lakes, oceans, different places. That dream was repeating for years. And that really got my attention because no other dream ever repeated. And I'm like, why are dolphins in my dream always every night? What are they trying to tell me? There was then other dreams where um, there was different underwater dreams with dolphins where I would swim with them. And, and uh, one thing that was repeating was me grabbing onto one of them and uh, dolphins started to go really, really fast and I would never let go. Like my my eyes would go like this. I couldn't do it. Like I was, I'm like, no, I'm not letting go. So uh, that was another thing that that really got my my attention. And after a while, I decided I needed to go swim with them. There was no other way for me to find out why the dreams would be there uh, i mean i could have, <laughs> now looking back i'm like well i could have read a book about it but i i for some reason that idea never occurred to me so i my clarity was i needed to go swim with them to find out what the dreams are about yeah and so that's what i was going to ask you did you did you like start researching it and how to do that or you just go find some dolphins and start swimming well, that's the funny part. And I love sharing that story because I didn't do any research. I thought I'm going to show up. It's going to be exactly as in my dreams. I didn't even know, like, I didn't show up with a mask and a snorkel and fins. I just showed up in Hawaii. That was six years after the first dream. And many, many years after that, I swam with dolphins many years and, and, they're not always in the bay, in the same bay every day. They're, they're wild and they can choose where they're going to be each day. So the fact that I showed up in a random bay saying, I'm going to go here to this bay and hopefully dolphins are going to be there. And they were, to me, it's just great. I, I, love, I love that fact. But at the same time, uh, in the book, I called myself a greenhorn. Uh, this is a wild, wild west expression of somebody that came. Yeah. To, yeah. Uh, so I, as a kid, I loved Wild Wild West books and the, the greenhorn was the word there. So I was a complete greenhorn in dolphin swimming. So I swam out to them. And what happened was I didn't understand how to interact with them where I would create a space of respect. So what I did was I allowed my excitement to completely get crazy and I just wanted to get close to them. And so when you allow that excitement to, to over, overpower you in a way, it, it did it in a way where it wasn't respectful to dolphins anymore. So I was swimming so much that, that they started to slowly move out of the bay without me noticing it. And I would just swim with them. And I was like, dolphins, I'm here. And, <laughs> and at one point, mm. they disappeared. 
And when I turned around, I realized how far I gotten from the shore. And that was the moment of, you know, remembering all the stories about Hawaii, the currents and everything. And I'm out there very far from the shore, you know, realizing dolphins are not here anymore. I don't have any excitement in there. Um, I started swimming back. And if, if you ever swim a long distance, you know that the trees are not going to change much. Uh, like or the objects on the shore it takes a while for you to actually see the difference and those five or ten minutes of you know these objects not changing uh, was the moment where where the fear came in and was like uh, what if I'm in a current that's flowing out of the bay and it's going you know the exactly the same speed as I'm trying to swim in and there was all these different fears coming in um, really fearing for my life and in that moment, the guy that I talked to before I went in the water stepped on the shore right next to the water and started to do slow strokes looking at me. And as he was doing that, um, I just, this peace came over me and I was like, okay, just, just keep swimming, you know? So <laughs> that was a big gift for me, is having somebody with the same intention being there just doing these slow strokes with me and I made it back and, and we hugged and as I as I came back I was so grateful I'm still alive and I sat on the beach and this one sentence came into my mind which I believe is for anyone that wants to go swimming with dolphins the most important thing the, the sentence was dolphins will come when you're ready so they come to you when you're ready. And this for me was a big learning lesson of what your energy and the way you are with them in the water can cause. Yeah. It's about you creating the space yeah. of, of the heart that welcomes them in instead of you trying to do something. And this, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's trying to, yeah. It's yeah. so logical when you say it, but I've seen yeah. it over and over again. And nobody explains it to tourists, to people that go swim with dolphins for the first time. They all are just, nowadays, it's all about trying to get a good photo. And when people are trying to get a good photo, they're not realizing that their behavior is actually a little violent to the dolphins, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. So it's, it's I'm, I'm glad I had this experience because when I share it, I did everything wrong. I, you know, I didn't, st you know, study how to do it. I just showed up thinking it's going to be the same as in my dreams. And I love that I had that experience of, of all that, even experiencing, you know, thinking I'm in the current where I could. Uh, then I, I now can convey this message of don't let the excitement and your love, because that's the thing. Most people love dolphins, but don't let that energy get the better of you where you forget about your heart where you forget about the respect where you forget mm -hmm. about how to be welcoming in yeah. your energy yeah. yeah the honor and the reverence yeah. so what what uh so how many more attempts did you have until you actually in your in your mind were able to actually swim with them in... Oh, it was, it was the next time. I The no. next time I went in the water and I said, I'm not doing anything. And I would just keep on saying in my mind, dolphins will come when I'm ready. And they did. Th they did. That's the thing. The whole pot came to me. I was in the middle of it, too. And I was still so not, um, <laughs> not an expert of snorkeling that as, they, as I was in the middle of the pot, I forgot that... <laughs> you know, keep your snorkel out of the water and while you're breathing in it. And so I would breathe in water while I'm having this joyful, blissful moment of finally meeting them. I, I breathe it in water and I was coughing like crazy. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now let me ask you, um, do you communicate? I mean, are you connected? A lot of people are connected to different aspects of the universe, different faces. Some are, uh 5d and higher dimensional i mean we do it we do it we're doing it now you know uh but i mean do you speak to them uh etherically and or when you're in the water with them uh yes 
So I want to just share a little piece mm. of the story that's really important as how that came about. So what happens in the water and what happened to me that first time um, when I was with them is called dolphin bliss. You've probably heard it in Hawaii. People use it a lot in Hawaii. Dolphin bliss is a state of unexplainable joy and, and, and peace and beauty that can happen with dolphins without any, how would you say that, without any physical, you know, except for the dolphins being there physically, you have no other other explanation of how does that bliss, it just, it's like somebody opened a floodgate in your cells and this bliss comes running in. Uh, so when I share this, and this is part of what I studied as far as part of the dolphin therapy and my social work stuff, I, I was wondering how to access that bliss in, in otherwise. But what happened after that, I wanted to experience this bliss in all different parts of the world. I was like, I'm going to go and swim with dolphins and whales anywhere I can. So for years, I was traveling, trying to swim with them. And, and then I had this experience with a woman in Croatia where I thought that she's going to take me out on a boat to see the dolphins. Uh, and we hugged in the middle of the kitchen. And as we hugged, she pulled down my back with her with her fingers. And in that moment, my nose changed and morphed into a dolphin nose. And then my, my mouth and eyes and my whole body, body part by body part, morphed into a dolphin. And all of a sudden, there was a big mirror up for me saying, it's like dolphins were saying, well, you think you need to come swim with us to experience this dolphin bliss, but really, it's inside. And mm. that's where the title of the book, Inner Dolphin Awakening, comes from. And then my whole journey, this was such a real experience. We all had visions and, and things happen multidimensionally where, where it kind of happens in the etheric reality. This was very physical. So... And at the same time, there was no real explanation. What happened? What does that mean? And how can I be both dolphin and human? And, you know, I would then ask, well, who else am I if I'm both dolphin and human? Um, and so this was a big kind of shift for me where, where all of a sudden I started to focus inward where I would ask, well, if dolphin bliss is inside me, how do I get to it? And, and and how can I be in two places at the same time? Because this really was an experience of being both at the same time and very physical. So the way I explain it now that our soul is like a flower that has many petals. And your human part is only one of those flower petals. And and dolphin, there's another petal of your soul that, that embodies in dolphins and whales. Mm. So... And there's many other petals that we're we're trying we're starting to remember now, and I believe dolphins' role in that is remain reminding us that really we need to start remembering the joy of the soul to be able to to access all these different parts. Um, mm. So I I like explaining that because I believe it's important for when I say that, yes, I do talk to dolphins and yes, I actually even channel them, um, that there's an understanding that we are all part of the pod. It's we are all connected in ways that go way beyond what we what we were thought or what, you know, what our understanding is and 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 it's it's beautiful and so when i i believe when i channel dolphins and whales i become part of the pod remembering that my soul is already there a part of it so i i in a way allow dolphins to speak through my soul and through me yeah wow now did they ever did they ever tell you why you were approached because they came to your dreams or was it, do you think it was more of a memory that came to the surface within they, yourself? They say we're all part of the same wave. We're all doing it our, in our own unique wave. Just what you're doing is part of the same wave. And, and we're all, they're coming to many people in their dreams. When I start, yeah. when I travel around, when I, 
when I have events and, and when I present workshops, there is many people coming to me with very similar experiences. Wow. Um, so I believe I just, you know, I, what I, what I love about the experience of morphing that happened for me was that, that it was so, um, so real and it, it didn't leave me alone. It still doesn't, it's still, there's another layer of information as I go in. So, um, I believe so what I did did with it, I, I I came to a very practical way of for for what I call inner dolphin awakening, where you travel through each one of these dolphin points and you experience the qualities that they carry uh, through saying the affirmations. And we can do. I, I'm not sure if you know if you're fine. Yes. You can do that with. with yes, we can. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah we can do that. We actually so, this this month. Uh, one year ago this month, and actually within the last three or four days, because I just saw it, we did a show with Lauren Hazel out of Florida, who is a is a dedicated light worker who works with the dolphins every day. She lives on the beach or near the beach. Uh, we actually did a a meditation uh, online, you know, on a show like this a year ago, you know, for a year and a few days ago, and we did a dolphin meditation. I had two come in. And within that week, I had him come in two or, two or three other times while I was alone. Uh, and I don't remember the exact um, lessons involved or what the information was or the intel was. But it was interesting because during that show, I actually bilocated. So I had the meditation or the session going with Lauren and, uh, and then my, my wife, who was in Australia at the time, we bilocated. So I was over there. She was experiencing it. I was experiencing it. And I was dealing with the dolphins and, and uh, Lauren Hazel. Uh, so it was very interesting. But I remember being uh, very much a blissful uh, frequency, very, very joyful, blissful. I, it, it, if When I think about it now, I just think of a big smile. So, yeah, we're open to it. Whatever you want to do, this is a platform for people to, to have a okay. – uh, more awareness of what you do and who you are. Yeah, so dolphins say it's all about the experience. So we can talk about all these things, but really it comes down to experience. So these dolphin points, as I call them, there's seven on the on our bodies, are really the body parts, and they're really invitations to feel, observe, and and bring in different dolphin energies that we that we know they embody and now it's for us it's time for us to start embodying this these energies and they're saying that really that the multi-dimensional experiences that we're having the more the more we're embodying this quality the more we remember the ease of this multi-dimensional traveling mm. so um if if i'm i'm ready to just go i'm ready i'm yeah. ready is, i'm sure everybody <laughs> out there is ready yeah, we're ready for this. Yeah. Definitely. So I usually just start by by bringing our attention to the heart first and and I do that by put putting my hand on my heart. And I like to thank my heart for being there. Our heart's so precious. It's always there for us. And, and it's important to thank it for being there, beating with, with this life force. And, and it's just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. So we do this inner dolphin awakening journey by gently touching each of the body parts we're going to mention. And really, it's an experience of the petal that I mentioned. So if your soul is multidimensional and has many petals, you can experience each one of those petals because you are all of those. Uh, so this is an invitation to redefine what I really means and what I am really means. So we start by, by touching our nose very gently. And just allow the remembrance of the dolphin nose. 
Your nose might get a little longer. And just observe what's important here is to observe the energy of the dolphin nose. Observe the quality it carries. And it's the quality of curiosity. And the affirmation for, for this dolphin point is, I'm curious and I love to explore. And if you feel comfortable, you can say this out loud. I'm curious and I love to explore. And just allow yourselves and, and yourselves and your innate and your heart to hear this. And then we go to, to the dolphin smile. So we just gently touch the corners of the mouth. And as you, as you allow this gentle smile to spread across your, your lips, just observe the cells around your lips starting to dance. They start mm -hmm. moving. Mm -hmm. They feel, they feel the energy of the smile. And, and you can allow this, this communication of the joy to happen through the cells, throughout your body. It's almost like a little telephone game where the cells are saying to each other, I'm, I'm joyful. I'm yeah. joyful. I'm joyful. So the affirmation here is, I'm joyful and I love life. I'm joyful and I love life. And the invitation as well is to, to do this the first thing in the morning when you wake up. What happens if you open your eyes and, and you have the three seconds? I think that's how long it lasts before your first thought comes in. You have three seconds. What would happen if in those three seconds you, you would smile and say, I'm joyful and I love life and observe this little dance of the cells that goes through your, your being, through your body? How would your day shift? What would your energy feel? In what way would it react? This is the probably the most important reminder of the dolphins. It's the first one. It's the one that we, it's the easiest for us to connect with. So bringing joy in opens many doors that we don't even know is, are there. And multidimensional reality is really accessible through joy. It's not about seriously meditating. It's about increasing the amount of joy you feel in yourself, you feel in your body. Mm. I'm joyful and I love life. Mm. That's a great point. And gently touch the corners of your eyes. Dolphin eyes, if you ever swim with them, they see your multidimensional presence. They see the mm. colors of your Merkaba. They see what else is there. They even see who you've been and the potential of where you're going. Mm. And when they look at it, you realize, they look in you in the eyes and you realize they see immense beauty. So here we are invited. This is an invitation to start rewiring our eyes to see beauty. We're all invited to, to activate these dolphin eyes that see beauty as we look around. And not just that, this point connects with the curiosity. And you're invited to start using the multidimensional curiosity where instead of looking at something outside of you and saying this is all there is to it, the person in front of you is talking to you. How about looking at what else is there? Who else this person is? What's there in that field? Dolphins look at all these different levels of our being. So that's the invitation. I see the beauty and blessings of life. And we see always the beauty say, and blessings of life. Yeah. We always say, if you want to see the beauty and blessings, the easiest way to do that is to become the blessing yourself. Mm. Experience it. And Dolphin blowhole on top of your head. So for many, many hundreds and thousands of years, 
it's been known that this is where the seven chakras, this is where the soul enters the body. There's where the pineal is. How, what happens if you take a deep breath through your dolphin hole, through your seven chakra? What happens? You start bringing in the light of your being. And it comes in with every breath. And this has been an invitation of many wise teachers. And dolphins are inviting us to do the same. We're invited to bring in the light of our being with every breath. Mm. And the affirmation here is I breathe deeply. I use my breath to bring in my soul. I breathe deeply. I use my breath to bring in my soul. Thank you. That's beautiful. And we come down to our heart. We can gently touch our heart and open the hand, hands outwards and feel the pectoral fins. Mm. And as you feel that, become conscious of dolphins being, we call it locked in this position. So they're not having an ability to come to you and do this. They stay open. So the invitation here is to keep your heart open. We've been going every, every different religion and technique is inviting us to open your, our hearts, but then we keep on going back to closing it. Well, now, in this new time, it's time to keep our hearts open, no matter what's happening, no matter how dark we perceive our environment to be, how, how crazy the people around us. How, what happens if you keep your heart open? <coughs> and we'll tell you what happens. You start knowing and feeling and sensing everything in front of you, around you, in your surroundings. It really becomes a communication that goes beyond what is thought to be possible. It becomes a communication that's called telepathy. So this is the invitation here. The affirmation, my heart is always open. I explore telepathy and interspecies communication. My heart is always open. I explore telepathy and interspecies communication. Many people will come and swim with dolphins and are going to have an experience of telepathy that they're not going to know how it happened. And it's going to happen through an open heart. And through that open heart, there's going to be what I call a bridge of love that's built between the hearts. And then the signal from your brain can travel across that bridge. So telepathy needs hearts to be opened and in love with each other. And that's why people experience it with their loved ones and with their pets a lot. Because there was the bridge of love there first. And it sounds like, it sounds like the, the dolphins are a bridge themselves between the physical and the non-physical. And they're like a physical and non-physical higher. Well, they're, higher. they're saying, you know, become become like us and, and you're gonna get it like you're gonna see what's possible they are traveling between their their invitation is not just to experience the laugh at in interspecies communication here with trees and and different animals and people around you but there really is a way to travel between different different stars yeah and, and experience the communication with the mm -hmm. star people that again we come back to the petals of your soul the star people really are different petals of your soul yeah different experiences you had in those other places so this is all a bridge that's being built that all happens inside really mm. and we come down to the bottom of your spine and that's where the sixth dolphin point is and that's the dorsal fin so mm. when it happened to me, the first time I had the morphine experience, I, I looked at, at uh, my dorsal fin and I said to myself, oh my God, we didn't have a tail there, there we had a dorsal fin. 
and they didn't tell us the truth in school. Um, <coughs> it's an invitation to remember that we're much more than human. So here we talk about our connection to the stars. We talk our, about our connection to the multidimensional parts of our being that are all there. So the affirmation is I'm a multidimensional being filled with light and color and sound. I'm a multidimensional being filled with light, color and sound. Self-love builds a bridge to my multidimensional nature. Self-love builds a bridge to my multidimensional nature. I remember my star origins. I remember my star origins. So when we speak about telepathy and we say you need an open heart and a bridge of love, that's why everybody talks about self-love, because it builds a bridge between different parts of you. Yeah. So it then allows for telepathy within your own being. It allows for a communication between you and your dolphin part. It allows for communication between you and your star incarnation from Sirius or any other place. That's why we say self-love builds a bridge to my quantum nature. And the last dolphin point is the feet, they morph into a dolphin tail. Hmm. And dolphin tail with its shape is a reminder of how dolphins are grounded. So we've been invited for many years to imagine roots growing to the center of the earth and to ground and to feel our connection with Gaia and so on. Well, here's a, here's a different concept and a different invitation is to experience how dolphins are grounded. If they're in the water, how do they ground? How do they touch the earth? How do they connect to the center of the earth? And dolphin tell represents how dolphins are grounded. It starts from wide open and comes together into a single point, the body of a dolphin. And this represents how they're grounded. Gaia is like an infinite, you can't see my hands going into, when you feel about the planet, it's not, it's, it feels like it stretches into infinity, it's so big. So this infinite presence of Gaia, this infinite love of Gaia, actually embodies itself into a dolphin. And this is what dolphin tail represents. Coming from infinite nature of Gaia into a single individual body, a body of a dolphin. One consciousness that embodies everything that Gaia is. So here's an invitation, instead of grounding deep into the planet, allow the planet to become you. <clears throat> Mm. How does that sound? Sounds very good. Sounds really good. So they don't need to ground because they are Gaia herself. Yeah. And it's time for us humans to remember the same thing. <clears throat> mm. Excellent. So this Excellent. Is, this is a very... Um, just a very short experience of each of the points. As you dive deeper into each one of them, there's more information about yeah. each of these qualities. And, and, and it's, it's an amazing journey. For me personally, I've, I've been going deeper and deeper each, each time I go into them. And it's really an invitation to experience and to feel how it is to be human and dolphin at the same time. Mm. It's, they say that you know for for us humans we've been so conditioned to believe we're just one thing that they say it's easier for us to start opening gradually where we experience another part of ourselves and we're like oh i'm two things i'm in two places at the same time and they said because if we saw all of it there's we're really in in infinite places at the same time yeah. And starting to redefine what this I am means. I am both human and dolphin. I am many other things. 
is the key to remembering this 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 space where your soul where your i am actually is all the time very good very good so you you utilize this uh now you you not you're not just an author uh you you actually you're a practitioner and you work with the dolphin energy when you work with people is that accurate yeah. this this um Inner Dolphin Awakening is actually a full day workshop. Um, we're going to be traveling back to Europe just this um, in April. And really, it's it's for me, it's a, it's a joy to facilitate this journey for people, not just this was now 10 minutes. And we go into each of the dolphin points and really experience that energy. It's like a spiral that takes you deeper and deeper into an experience of it. So... Um, Yes, I, I, I love, I love being like a part of, you know, it's like when, when I was writing the book, Dolphin said to me, I can't call it my book. And I said, why is that? It, it was so much fun saying to people, hey, here's my book, you know. <laughs> and they said, um, they just used my stories to, to really transfer their energy through my experiences for other people to feel and i feel the same thing happens at the workshops i i come and i say well you know this is what i experienced and here are the dolphin points but i believe that journey becomes very quickly a personal journey for each person that starts feeling and diving into this this point and they're really dolphins many times said there are invitations more than more than rules more than um ways of of saying oh this is this is what it is really this is what i put together to make it a linear form where anyone can follow anyone can go through these points and start feeling that but there really are invitations to start feeling these energies and, and working with them and start what I call become a quantum explorer yourself. So this is like opening doors. And then, you know, the first point curiosity really is an invitation to, to keep that curiosity and start exploring what else is there? Who am I? What, what is there in this multidimensional reality? And, and in what way each of these dolphin points really um, reminds me of that place of multidimensionality. Um, and so when I, when I have the workshops, for me, it's just a joy to see um, people being able to, to say, oh, you know, this, this is where it took me. You know, what you said was the starting point, and then it took me into, into that. So yeah. to me, that's, that's great. I, I don't want to come, you know, I don't want people to come and say, oh, this is it. You know, I have this exercise. Now I can do that. Uh, and that's all there is to it. I want people to understand that this is just one way of opening that door to that multidimensional reality. And then, and then you are the one that is going to step through that door and start really embodying those pieces and, and exploring what else is there and what your connection really is. So um, to me, it's always a joy seeing that people actually do start stepping, you know, and, and exploring themselves. Yeah. So it, it's wow. beautiful. Yeah, it is. I, I, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed that. I could actually feel myself smiling when I was touching my lips and I could feel this happening. And then the heart thing was really, really cool. So, um, and now I, I uh, understand too that you, you uh, are in a choir. Is that right? In, yes. Um, in, so if you, I, I'm not sure. You, you probably had so many people on, on the show. Somebody mentioned Cryon along the way. Have you heard of? Cryon? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think a lot. I think most everybody's familiar with. Him. Okay. Yeah. So um, Cryon back in 2010 said, um, <clears throat> "It's time to um, bring a choir together. It's called the Lemurian Choir, really." And he said, "Back in Lemuria, every winter solstice." Um, there was 200 people getting together um, on one of the mountain peaks uh, in, I think it was in Maui, I think it was in that um, um, 
the valley in, in, in Maui in between the two the two hills. Um, anyway, they would get together to sing the tones in the choir. So toning, many people are familiar, is um, a certain way of, of singing yeah. that allows the tones to turn inwards and, and really create resonance in all different, um, I, I call them inner chambers. So, you know, when you turn the tones inwards and you explore uh, how they resonate within your pineal, it feels like it's a chamber inside you and, and that chamber starts to then expand and and take you to different places. So um, what this choir did in Lemuria was that they would get together and, and, and do a sequence every winter solstice to send a signal back to Pleiades, according to Cryon, uh, saying, um, we still remember and we're conscious and um, we remember where we came from and and we're living our lives in the memory of full memory of who we are and he said and that last time it happened was 26,000 years ago and in 2012 he said it's time to do it again mm. um, so he said um, this is at first, we thought we're just going to sing the tones and that's all there's going to be to it. But um, he later channeled that there is actually 12 pairs of nodes and nodes on the planet. And those nodes, nodes, and, nodes and nodes are like receivers. So they're like antennas that receive the, um, the energy from the universe and the information. And they weren't, they weren't active um the whole time the the whole 26,000 years and right. he said the job of the choir was really to travel to each one of those to each and and perform all these sets of tones it's a full day it's a full day toning and um these receivers then pop up like antennas and start receiving information and that information gets released on the grids of the planet so what happens then is you have your own antennas. Your DNA really is multidimensional and can start picking up this information without you even knowing. Like um, there can be scientists that are completely not spiritual in any way, but um, when they fine tune their vibration, they can pick up new inventions and and things we already had on different planets. Uh, they're becoming available on the grids of the planet. And so different people are going to pick it up in different ways. But every kid being born after 2012 is actually picking up this new vibration and is, is already tuned in to this higher frequency. So um, they're born with it. So to them, for example, one of the teachings of Brown is that the war is not going to make any sense anymore, you know? They're going to come to a place where they're going to say, why would I do hate somebody just because it's part of my culture? Just because right. my grandparents decided to hate them, why would I need to, to hate them as well? Right. So these new kids are going to be born with it and are not going to buy into any of the old stuff. Yeah, and yeah it's, so it's an exciting thing. It's an exciting um, time. And everything that's coming, is, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's, yes, it is. And so the toning, uh, what y'all were doing at these nodes, uh, yeah. you're basically, you're sending out a signal to receive, somehow, somehow or another, you're sending out a signal or opening up to receive this uh, other planetary knowledge or that type of yeah. thing, like you were talking about with the scientists. Very cool. Yeah. So it's like combination of tones and the like the group of people. So there's usually around 400 people that gets together. Yeah. Um, you, the combination of that consciousness and and the tones um, un unlocks. It's like a, it's like in a way the way I see it multidimensionally. It's it's like it's like a little wake up signal to to different systems within our grids that are there waiting for us. So. Yeah. We always knew there was a potential for this time where humanity would start waking up. Yeah. So these stones are, are like um, just activating the system that were there in place in case we did it, you know. 
and it mm. involves it involves many different you know people it involves crying channeling it involves many different layers of how this happens and it's again we just show up and and um like you sing the tones and a lot of them are strange and so on but um you i i think we as humans have like maybe 10 percent of understanding of what actually happens on all, all the other levels yeah yeah, yeah. no it makes sense because it's all interconnected just like you said that uh the whole aspect thing of the the dolphin you know it's inside so the tone yeah. the toning opens up something inside which is yeah outside and it's just it's a interconnected relationship somebody was asking uh just asked uh can you do a show can we do a show on toning and somebody else said i want to tone maybe we'll have to get together again and and do some type of uh you know some type of toning we've had we have had people do it uh i think people uh, maybe it's time for them to to gain a wider understanding of it and Perhaps well, we can collaborate again and talk more about the dolphins. Uh, the oh, sorry. The exciting part for me is that Grant said that nodes and nulls are in dolphins and whales as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, the time capsules. So he's saying that they're part of this whole system and he never explained in what way. So what I'm doing with people at the workshops is tone as a group to send a message to, to dolphins and whales to, to unlock as mm -hmm. well. So... It's exciting. So I think it would be, yeah, it would be amazing to to see what happens when it if you do it on the show for sure. Yeah, I think so. I think we could uh, we could do that. Yeah, we'll reach out to you and and we'll we'll put something together if you're open to it in the next few weeks. Uh, and also, if you would make sure that you, uh, I think somebody may put it up, but uh, let's just make sure that the links for your book and whatever sites you have. If you could put them in the comments, because I know people are going to want to reach out to you and find Perfect. out more information as well. And we'll get in touch with you. Perfect. Uh, excellent show. Very, very uh, uplifting and activating for me personally, and I'm sure others as well uh, that are here for live and uh, on the replay. Thank you so much for honoring us with your presence and sharing space with us. And the best to you and your beautiful wife and child. And I uh, look forward to working with you again. Thank you so much for having me. It's it's always a pleasure. And yeah, I, the dolphins are ready to go worldwide. You know, the, the other dream was that the dolphins were coming on land. So the, I believe this is a part of it. I believe they're coming on land through each one of us. So it's exciting and I'm grateful for you, for you to have me and looking forward to, to more. Thank you. Absolutely. You're very welcome. You take care. We'll see everybody in another hour for the last show of the day. Aloha. Thank you, Jan. Take care. Yeah. Aloha.